MoDOT innovators from across the state gathered recently to compare notes and select the top innovations in projects, productivity, and tools and equipment. Here's a sample of the very best from this year's Innovations Challenge Showcase. In this project we had on I-70, we had the, uh, an area where we were having the existing Type A medium barrier getting hit. Uh, it's an old barrier, needed to be replaced. We were having chunks that were actually being, uh, we had impact, were being thrown out in the opposing lanes of traffic, so we needed to replace barrier wall. We had uh, very narrow sh inside shoulders, two foot inside shoulders. We had a very uh, tight construction window. We could only close lane down from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., so an eight hour construction window, basically. So the problem is, how do you remove type A barrier, install new type C barrier, the taller barrier, have it gain strength and open up the traffic in eight hours and get production. So what we did is we worked with uh, FHWA to do a pilot project. Uh, to basically we're using the existing type A barrier as a core and we're capping it. The crew sets up a lane drop, they come back and they, they have a system where they drill the holes on the barrier the night before. They come back the, the next evening, they install all the reinforcing steel. Then basically you're setting up your slip form machine, which is basically the standard type C mold, except for the contractor split the top, so it's a standard type C mold, except for it's wider. So once you get this set up and you have the crew tying steel in front of you, it's basically the same slip form operation. We save the, the cost of removing the existing type A barrier and the cost of temporary barrier while we took the existing barrier out. While this concrete is curing, as we open up the traffic the next day, we still have the inner core to prevent traffic from going through the next day. So that's our innovation. Uh, worked out really well, did it on I-70, and we'll work with FHWA to get overall approval for the project used statewide. We've had a lot of problems in the past with the public not being able to see the wing plow. It's created a lot of accidents, and uh, we've had 23 of these tore up within the last two years. The public has come back and told us that they really appreciate the visibility that they've created. They're very easy to see from the front and the back. It's a real easy project to make. Total cost is only a, a little over $300. Very operator friendly. From in the cab, you can see the placement of your plow. And when you're going down the road for the edges of your bridges and uh, your guardrails, you're able to get in and really have a good visibility of where you're going. And also, one of the biggest deals that we have with this wing plow, we use it a lot in game plowing. And when the public tries to come through, they'll try to split through your trucks. So when they go to jump through, they see this light and instantly it deters it. We've even had one gentleman that drove over 20 miles to come back and tell us that he really appreciated us putting them on. And I believe it's a, a good safety aspect for the public. And uh, I think it's a, just a good idea. I think it'll save us a lot of money, we really do. It's just a fish finder, but we found different, different things that we could use it for. Uh, we, was, we was charged with going out ahead of the mowers and finding obstacles that, that might you know, cause uh, uh, accidents or you know, cause us to have uh, tire blowouts. I tried to stay in front of the mowers for probably two weeks with a can of paint and it was, uh, it was very tiresome and didn't, didn't work out real well. Rainy, rainy conditions, that sort of thing. And we come up with this, what we, what we did was I went out ahead and I marked all of our obstacles on here. I marked them once, used a micro SD card and saved it, saved the data and just put it in the others. And uh, so, so now all of our tractors are synced up the same way. You know, We used about five different uh, markers on ours. Um, like, a, like the Blue Cross, it, it's, our, uh, it's our cross pipe. So you know if you see a Blue Cross coming up, it's probably over here next to the, to the highway. We use the, uh, the green, there's a little green symbol on there. We use that for foam pedestals. Your foam pedestals is generally over next to your right of way line. So, if you see something in your peripheral vision coming up and, and you know, you, you pick up on that color as you're coming to it, then you know kind of which side to start looking for things. And it has so much data in there that you can, that you can uh, tap into. Uh, it's got a distance meter. If we want to pull it out, put it in a truck, to set our, uh, our work zone signs. Uh, you've got a distance meter for that. So now you've got all this information at your fingertips that you can transfer from vehicle to vehicle. You can transfer it to your laptop. We can put these in our sprayers and mark no spray zones. So uh, um, we've used it on, uh, on sickle tractors and cab tractors and, and everything's worked real well. Uh, we have the hover trimmer here. And uh, the main reason we got, we purchased the hover trimmer was for safety. It cost about $225 to get started with it. Year before we purchased this, we spent a little over $6,300 in windshield claims just from the traditional line trimmer. We purchased this one. We haven't had a windshield claim since from weed eating. Mainly use this attachment 
along the roadway, bridges, and guard cable. It's been a huge help for us. Productions went up, cost has went down. They're easy to maintain. You can sharpen them with three different files. The blade is replaceable. You have the shield. It is made of plastic, a hard plastic. It's replaceable. You attach it. It takes about 15 minutes to put it on. You get your RPMs up, hold it full throttle, and it'll hover anywhere from roughly three to six inches from the ground. As long as you keep it throttled with a weed eater of this kind, you can actually go one-handed and just swing it back and forth. It takes the effort out of weed eating. The bottom line for it is it's safer for the operator, the customer. Um, this is the LED light that we've put on the cab of the truck. It helps a lot in nighttime vision, relaxes your eyes a lot, gets rid of the strobe effect as you're driving down the road. Just a lot safer way to plow snow. The lights are mounted on top of the cab, shining down, not out so much. Keeps the glare out of the traffic space. These lights really help the operator because you get a better view of what you're doing. You can adjust them to where illuminate the shoulder better. You get a better feel for the, the road in general. The eye strain is greatly reduced. The, the strobe effect, rather than your eyes having to absorb the strobe every time, it, it kind of washes that out and you, your, your eyes aren't constantly trying to adjust to the strobe. This is, uh, this is our adjustable guardrail. We actually had a project uh, last summer. It was in the entire Southwest District and uh, about 10 counties. And the total contract was around 40, about 42,000 foot of guardrail. And uh, it basically required all new guardrail, post, hardware, blocks, and uh, there actually were some uh, some end anchors and stuff in that as well. But uh, the contractor was James H. Drew Corporation, and uh, we proposed a value engineering with them in Taney County. And it would have been all new guardrail. It would have been new posts, hardware, blocks. And basically what we ended up doing, our, our, our goal was to get our guardrail at our uh, specific height that we need, which is 29 inches. And in order to do that, we have to pull the post, put new posts, put new rail. And the cost of it, of all that, uh, we're thinking there's got to be a better way to do that, an easier way to do that. And, and easy is exactly what we come up with. It's very basic. So we had the contractors pull the entire rail off and they basically laid the rail down, never had to separate the sections, just laid it all down in one piece, three, three, four hundred foot at a time, right on the ground with a hydraulic punch, punched new holes three inches higher on the post. So we didn't have to remove, remove the post at all, used wood blocks and then just put the, put the rail right back up on it. So we used the existing rail, existing post. We eliminated labor for pulling posts, labor for running string line to, to do all the new string line on three, 400 foot of post. Very time consuming. We cut our time on the road for, for any impact on traffic in half completely. So we got our traffic control up half the time. Based on that county alone, it was a 48% saving. Uh, that's labor and material. And, and ultimately, we, we basically recycled what we have there. And, and that makes perfect sense. The rail's in great condition. Obviously, if there's something bad, we'll replace that section. Overall, a 48% savings. I mean, it, it was, it was, a, and the contractor took right to it. It was, it was, it worked really well. Every year, this gets better and better. We figure out things that make it better, and then we go around in the room and do the competition. And it's really not about the competition part, but that kind of makes it interesting. Because what it's about is, you go in there and you look at those innovations and you think about how we're going to make things better. And that's what this is about. And then we're going to do the fun stuff about how we're going to kind of recognize some of the ones that we really like and, and have a little bit of fun with that. But I want to know you to know that everybody that's come here today or anybody that's been in the district with, with one of the challenges, everybody's a winner. Because all that stuff makes MoDOT better every day. So your it's really more about your spirit and your mind and how you think about things and making the right environment for innovations to happen. And so that's what this is about. You know, kind of the bonus is we get all this cool stuff that we're going to get to use and it's going to make our jobs better. But really what it's about is setting the right tone, 
having the right environment for innovations to happen in this organization everywhere. And as we go forward with the challenges that we've got, we've got to make sure that we even are more aggressive in that arena. Some people say, well, we're going to stand back because we don't have any money and we're going to, you know, crawl in a hole. The stuff that we're doing here and the things that we're talking about and making our jobs more effective, more efficient, safer, you know, better, we've got to ramp that up even more. So next year, I expect that we're going to see even more cool things in the room across the hall. Okay? Now, the other challenge that we've got is I want you all to be thinking about how you're going to take the stuff you learned today and take it back and make sure that we disseminate it across the organization. You know, the good idea in the room over there that we walk away from and never take really isn't that good of an idea. So the, the leadership, this is the challenge for the leadership and the folks that are responsible for our operations. Your responsibility is to make sure that these good ideas get put to use and that we disseminate them through the whole organization.